dear sisters, and today we are going to talk about the keys to victory in our spiritual warfare. And I would present five keys before you that I hope and trust and pray will really help you in the midst of your spiritual warfare. And my dear sister, as you remember, the whole point of my messages that I put before you are to exhort to encourage, to build you up and to strengthen you and to remind you and myself that we are called to an extremely, extremely high calling by the Lord to serve our husbands and to be their helpmeets. My dear sister, I want you to remember that by serving your husband, you are serving the Lord. And I know I mentioned that before, but I want you to remember that by serving your husband, you are serving the Lord, blessing him, ministering to him by being gentle and quiet and walking in that meek and gentle spirit. I also mentioned in my last study, as you remember, that... Um, as we pursue the virtues that the Lord and our husbands wants us to pursue, the spiritual warfare around us intensifies. And we should be prepared to be challenged in the areas that our husbands pointed out to us. Do you remember I gave you homework to ask your husbands to present some areas before um, in your life before you that he wants you to work on, whether it's nagging or being negative or being... Uh, angry sometimes at him for some, some things that he does or says or interrupting him, whatever that was in your particular situation. So be prepared to be challenged in those areas. Before, the enemy did not really care, hoping that you would continue your, in your controlling spirit, that you would continue in your negativity, that you would continue in your nagging, in your nagging spirit or spirit of manipulation. So he already had you in several areas of your life, so to say. But now he sees your desire to change and he is ready to attack. And my dear sister, we need to remember that if you continued in your old habit, habit patterns, most likely it would lead you to destruction or maybe even to divorce. So what can you do? What can we do, my dear sister, to fight the good fight? Let me start with a little scripture, which I already read uh, once before, but I, I will never get tired of reading this scripture. Second um, Corinthians 10 verses from three to six. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, um, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So I will present some keys before you that will help you to fight the good fight and be victorious. First, our first key, it's very obvious, but it's very important. We need to recognize and be aware of the spiritual uh, warfare, Ephesians 6, verses from 12 to 13. We need to be prepared to walk into that situation that your husband pointed out for you, or maybe several situations that you know where you are weak in. Like, for example, me, my example, like I always repeat that, but it's true when my husband comes home and he sits down to eat dinner and forgets to wash his hands, I need to remember this is my situation to be victorious and not remind or manipulate or control him, uh, to let him know that he needs to wash his hands. So I get ready, I get prepared, I, I gird up the loins of my mind and get ready and not just get relaxed. I know I will be challenged in this situation. Um, so the same I want you to, you to do, be aware of those little situations in your life that you're weak in. Secondly, tearing down. We are going to talk about tearing down 
every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You and I, my dear sister, need to tear down controlling thoughts, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And it's an active process. We need to do it. We need to cooperate with the Lord and tell him, by your power, I will do this. I am tearing down those thoughts. Also, we are preparing inwardly to tear down those thoughts. We know that my husband is going to come. I will have that desire to tell him, honey, would you please wash your hands? You know, but inwardly I am preparing. I'm already tearing down those thoughts by replacing it with the word of God, with the truth that I need to have gentle and quiet spirit. And me controlling my husband is not walking in the gentle and quiet spirit, obviously. Thirdly, you and I, my dear sister, need to stand on the revelation that the Lord has gave us, that we have received from the Lord and stand upon his promises. We remember what have we received. We have received the revelation to pursue the gentle and quiet spirit. We have a revelation to walk in the spirit. We have the revelation of importance of being daily filled with the Holy Spirit. So we need to stand on those promises and those revelations that we have received from the Lord. Um, we need to remember that being gentle and quiet, we are ministering to the Lord. Uh, we are exhibiting that aroma, that pleasant aroma, that fragrance of when we crucify our flesh, because obviously we are crucifying our flesh. My flesh wants to remind my husband to wash his hands. My flesh wants to remind my husband to brush his teeth or whatever, you know, whatever it is in, in your situation that you gravitate towards controlling your husband. So as we die to ourselves, this pleasant aroma is being emitted unto the Lord. We are ministering to him. Those are small things, but they are ministering to the Lord as we die to ourselves. You desire, you desire to please the Lord and grow in intimacy with him through your obedience by pursuing what he wants you to pursue. You do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. So remember, my dear sister, that this is very important to stand on the promises and to stand on the revelation that you have received. Our fourth point, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even though everything around us might push us into walking in the flesh, uh, being irritated, being agitated, everything might be out of control, but we still need to remember that we can, we have every ability by putting on the full armor of God, by being filled with the Holy Spirit to resist the enemy. And what does the Lord say? That he will flee. If we resist the enemy, he will flee. And we will be free from his attacks, of his fiery darts. And the last point, my dear sister, which is extremely important, important point number six, you and I, we need to have quality devotional time with the Lord. When you draw near to God and he's drawing near to you. So you can have a well that you can draw from, that you are not just living on the scrum of the word of God that you have received several months ago. Maybe on Sunday at church you listen something and maybe something, one little crumb got stuck. No, you have to have a quality devotional time with the Lord. So you can renew your mind and fill your mind with the truth. So when the lies can co will come from the enemy, you will be able to recognize them as lies, push them aside, resist them, tear them down and replace them with the truth. So my dear sister, spend some time with the Lord so you can be renewed so your mind can be renewed with the truth of the word. And my dear sister, your homework for this coming week would be to, if only possible, obviously it all depends on your time, to listen to my videos from week one to this particular video that we have just done one by one again 
to refresh what we have studied, to refresh what we have talked about, so you can be renewed, so you can be refreshed. 